One of the most common concerns I hear from homesteaders is, Zach, I can't find a way to make money on my homestead. It's so stressful. And I try to tell people that get the idea of a career out of your head. Homesteaders have always made money seasonally with multiple revenue streams. That's how homesteaders have always existed. And we have today in our mind this idea that I have to have a one career and that's my job. Wrong answer. Now, some of you live in certain places where you might be able to take advantage of an opportunity like this. Check out my favorite foodie website, Markey's.com. They are currently selling morel mushrooms dried for $373 per pound. <laughs> $373 per pound, folks. Now, I know some of you people out there, based on your comments in the past on my videos, have told me you guys find morels by the bucket full. If you are blessed to have that opportunity, well, here's a money-making opportunity seasonally for you. Okay, so a while back on a video, I got a lot of comments asking for my recipe on pickled eggs. And I've done videos before on this in the past, but I've never done a video on pickled quail eggs. And we have, we're just swimming in quail eggs. Quail is one of the most prolific birds on the planet. Actually, it's the chicken that is the most you know, populous uh, bird on the planet. There's no shortage of chicken. I think the last numbers I saw was 35 billion chickens in the world. However, if you have quail, you have quail eggs. And so today we're going to go through some of my recipes that I put together a while back and they're ready for tasting. So I thought we would do a taste test on the video today. So yesterday I, I basically pickled up a whole bunch of these quail eggs. Uh, now this recipe that I used here is uh, cayenne pepper, um, liquid smoke and garlic powder inside of that. And so uh, that'll be ready in about three weeks to taste. But I have some other ones we're going to taste today and go through. And then today at the end of the video, you got to stick around because I am going to issue you a challenge. You can take part in this if you want. You'll have to do some homework, you know, some legwork if you want to participate in this challenge. But those of you with homesteads who have quail, you need to take up this challenge. And those of you who know homesteads with quail need to issue this challenge and let everyone know about it. Because <laughs> we're going to do another video. Stick to the end and I'll show you what this is all about. So uh, this one here, this first one we're going to taste, we're going to taste three of these today. Uh, this one here is Frank's Red Hot and Mustard Seed. Frank's Red Hot. You can see the mustard seeds down there. Um, these quail eggs, some of them, one of them was soft in there. So it's got some debris from one of the quail eggs kind of breaking up. Um, that's one of the things about quail eggs, eggs I've found is that when you, when you make, uh, hard boiled quail eggs, you need to keep it turning and spinning so that uh, it becomes more of a, a solid mass. Um, the, the yolks can tend to go to the side. And so I've learned that this was the jar, one jar where that kind of happened, but this is Frank's red hot. I love, I like Frank's red hot. And I like mustard seeds. So that's the recipe. And then every single recipe that we're going to use here, and I'll give you the recipes, is, includes a teaspoon of salt per pint. One teaspoon of salt per pint. So there's two ingredients you're going to use with all these pickled egg recipes. Okay, two ingredients. Vinegar, okay, 100% vinegar like you buy from the store. And then one teaspoon of salt per pint. You can use more than that, but teaspoon is fine. you got to add a little bit of salt. So, and if you do that you won't have to refrigerate. None of these have been refrigerated. They've been sitting on my shelf for, you know, about, this one has been sitting on for about uh, six weeks. So we're gonna take one of these guys out here and I'm gonna see if I can taste some of these flavors. Hmm, okay. I can very much taste the Red Hot and I like that flavor. That's why I used it. I like Frank's Red Hot. Leave a comment below if you like Frank's Red Hot. Pretty good. I mean, I've done kind of this before with chicken eggs, so I'm kind of familiar with that. The one thing about quail eggs that really stands out from chicken eggs is that these are more creamy. They're just a creamier egg, and I don't know why that is, but I mean, that's one of the things I've also noticed from people who've tasted these and who talk about quail eggs on their videos is that the quail egg is just a creamier egg in general, whether you crack them open and... Uh, um, they're fluffier when you when you like scramble them or cook them, but when you pickle them, 
or hard boil them, you're, you're just gonna, it's just going to be a creamier egg. All right, so this next one is going to be uh, smoked popolo and rosemary. Smoked popolo and some rosemary down in that jar right there. Now, this is a quart jar, so because it's a quart, that's two pints. You put in, you know, two teaspoons of salt in this. So it's one teaspoon per pint. And if it's quart, you're going to use two teaspoons. And then whatever else you want to use. So maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon of each ingredient that you want, depending on if you want to add more or less. But that the ingredients are up to you. But that's really the ratios I use. It's got to be a teaspoon of salt per pint, you know, all vinegar, okay, and then um, whatever spices you want. And then as you pour your, pour your spices on, then pour your vinegar in, and then it'll all settle, and you can just kind of, you know, rotate it every so often to mix up the ingredients in the vinegar, right? Okay, see like that. Isn't that pretty? All right, let's go ahead and taste the rosemary and the smoked paprika. Smoked paprika. Mm. Got a lot of rosemary floating up at the top there. Mmm. That's good. I think I like that better than the Red Hot. Um, that's good. That reminds me of the just traditional bar top pickled eggs. If you guys, are, I mean, some of you guys who are old enough to remember. Most bars in America used to have a jar sitting on the bar top <clears throat> with, you know, full of pickled eggs. We don't do that today because food inspectors will come into this place of business and tell them you can't do that. And the reason they tell them they can't do that is because the world's full of lawyers and lawyers ruin everything. So thank a lawyer next time you, do, you walk into a bar and you don't see pickled eggs on top of the bar top. Because um, that's dangerous. You can't do that. The FDA says so. Why, do they, why does the FDA say so? Because the FDA is run by a bunch of lawyers. Okay, next one is going to be, that's why Shakespeare said... Famously, Shakespeare said, kill all the lawyers. The reason stupid hurts is because the world has too many lawyers. <laughs> or the reason stupid doesn't hurt is because we have too many lawyers. Okay, this next one is uh, cilantro, cilantro, thyme, and mustard. That's what it says right there. Cilantro, thyme, and mustard. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, my youngest walked by uh, the counter today. And he was like, Dad, when can we open those? Those look great. And, yeah, they do look good. So he was like, I'm sorry, well, we got to do a video later, so I'll do it after the video. You can have some. Cilantro, thyme, and mustard seed. Okay, so let's open that up. Let's see how we're doing here on time. Okay, a lot of cilantro floating up top. There's a little tiny egg. I'm trying to figure out, again, very creamy. The eggs are just creamier than chicken eggs. I'm trying to pick out the cilantro, and I just can't do it. I don't taste any of the cilantro. I was hoping to taste cilantro, and I put a lot of cilantro. I think I put a whole tablespoon of cilantro. I'm seeing all the cilantro floating up there. And this is dried cilantro, okay? So I got dried cilantro. We, we get it in town uh, from a Mennonite pantry. And um, I, uh, I was hoping to taste cilantro. I don't taste cilantro. I taste the thyme and mustard. I definitely taste that. All right, I got to do this again. Let me do it again. Mm -mm. I just don't. I don't taste it. That's disappointing. I was really disappointed in that. I was really hoping that on that one, I would be able to taste cilantro. I love cilantro. Some people don't like cilantro. That's fine. Leave a comment. If you think cilantro tastes like soap, leave a comment below. Because usually, people who hate cilantro will say it tastes like soap. So, so far, between all these, um, this, this one here, let's see. This one, the smoked paprika and the rosemary is my favorite, surprisingly. I did not think that that would be the case. But I have one more I want to try. One more. Check this out. The last one I want to try is this one. It's a chicken egg, and it's got liquid smoke in it. It's got liquid smoke. It's got red pepper flakes and mustard seed. Okay, so you can see the mustard seed in there. 
And it's got the, you can see the red pepper flakes in there. And a good helping, <clears throat> I would say about two teaspoons worth of liquid smoke in this. So I'm interested to see how that would do it, how that's going to taste. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to have to really fish this one out of here. Uh, okay. You can tell the egg is much darker. It, see, how it's, see how it's darker? It's not white anymore. It's because of the liquid smoke. I can't smell the liquid smoke, which is weird. <clears throat> hmm. Because liquid smoke is very potent smelling when you put it in. Maybe I can. I don't know. All right. So here we go. I can't taste it. Mm, maybe. Maybe at the end there I can taste it. Yeah, I can taste it barely at the end. Um, but that's disappointing, too, because I really wanted a smoky egg. Maybe next time I'll put two tablespoons of liquid smoke in this and see how this – that's – I did a – I don't remember how much did I put in this. I got about a teaspoon of liquid smoke in this one. But this one won't be ready for about six weeks. Uh, I just did that yesterday. Um, these have been in for about six weeks, and so you can tell the definite color difference – because of the liquid smoke, but it's not, it's not, uh, I can barely taste it. That's disappointing. Okay, so here's my challenge. Here's the challenge I want to issue to anyone out there in my audience to participate in, especially homesteaders with quail, okay? And especially those of you who know homesteaders with quail. This is my challenge. I want to know if you want me to try on my channel, on a video, for the first time ever. I've never done this before a balut. Would you want me to eat on camera for the first time ever a balut? Do you not, you don't know what a balut is. I hear you now. What's a balut? A balut, should I tell you? Make you go figure it out and just imagine the look of sheer horror on your face. Every time I describe to someone what a balut is, you just see their face go. <laughs> Those of you who know what a balut is, put a comment below. <laughs> so it has to do with quail. Okay. Um, we, have, we, have, we have the ability, because we have quail and because we hatch our own eggs, we have the ability to create balut here on this homestead. Now, balut is something that millions of people eat every day in Asia, in Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Indonesia. They eat this every day. So when you think about street food in America, you think of hot dogs and hamburgers, French fries. When you think of street food in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, the Philippines, you think of balut. Oftentimes you think of balut. And oftentimes it's made with, you know, uh, chicken eggs or duck eggs. However, the delicacy of balut, the high end of balut, the high end is always made with quail eggs. There is a homesteader, and we're going to talk about this in the video that we do, if we do it. You guys decide below if I should do it. There's a homesteader out there, and I'm going to open your eyes to this because I want you guys to be able to make money. Remember, at the beginning of the video, so many of you say, Zach, we're having a hard time making money. This homesteader out there, he sells 80,000 balut a year. 80,000 balut a year, and he's a homesteader. I want to I want to I want to share this because there's a there's a huge market for it, for it even in the United States. He's got nowhere to look. He sells eighty thousand balut a year. I think he sells them for fifty cents a piece. So you do the math on that. <laughs> do you want me to try a balut on video? Leave a comment below. That's the challenge. And anyone out there who has quail, my challenge to you is eat a balut on video. We'll call it the quail balut challenge. If you don't know what a balut is, look it up. B-A-L-U-T. B-A-L-U-T. A balut. We'll do a video on it. And we'll eat it right here on camera on an American homestead. All right, guys. Love you. Leave a comment below. Hey, listen. I'm going to be at the Homesteading Expo in the Ozarks over at Marshfield, Missouri, coming up in just a couple of weeks, less than two weeks. At the end of the month, 24th and 25th, I believe I will only be there on Friday with my booth. Um, I'll, you know, depending on what happens, I may be there on Saturday to, you know, just visit with people. But 
On Friday, I will be speaking 8.30 in the morning. Joel Salatin will be there also, the chicken man. And so I'm bringing all my chicken shirts. Farm Fresh Butt Nuggets and My Pets Make Me Breakfast. I'm bringing on my chicken shirt. So if you want a chicken shirt, uh, if you like Joel Salatin and all of his chicken tractors and all that stuff, uh, come stop by my booth. It's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of people there because Joel Salatin's going to be there. Thankfully, I'm not speaking at the same time he is because then no one would be there at my tent. I should be by myself. Um, but uh, yeah, so come out to the Ozarks Homesteading Expo in Marshfield, Missouri. If you just search for Ozarks Homesteading Expo, you can find all the information about it online. I hope to see you out there. And again, I'll have my booth out there on Friday, Friday only. So I'm looking forward to seeing every single one of you. All right, talk to you later. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. The largest Roman gold stash ever found was in Trier, Germany in 1993. 2,500 Roman coins worth over $1.2 million in melt value today was pulled from an excavation site. The obvious lesson here is that gold holds its value over time. Now, take the stack of old Soviet Union rubles. Do you know how much these are worth? Zilch. It's paper. It holds no value and, and like all paper and government fiat currencies will not last the test of time. Nobody a thousand years from now is going to unearth these or these and jump for joy at the wealth that they have just uncovered. Only one historical example of wealth preservation has stood the test of time over and over again. The safeguard of physical, physical gold and silver. If you have spent your entire working life putting money into a 401k or other savings and investment products, they have likely made pulling your money out either very hard or almost impossible. Genesis Gold Group can help you put that money safely into a physical gold and silver product that, like the Roman coins, will maintain their buying power long into the future. Call Genesis Gold Group today, right now, and let them develop a strategy for your savings, 401k, or self-directed IRA. A strategy of physical gold and silver. You can call the number on the screen or visit them at genesisgoldgroup.com. And be sure to say that you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>